What's up, everybody? Welcome to the WTH Breakout, episode number 18. I am uh, your host, Tommy, and I'm joined remotely with um, the, you know, the man without a plan, Wilson. Wilson, how are you? I never have a plan. Never, ever, ever. Never, never. You asked me uh, this morning before we started recording um, with your hat off, hey, should I just record like this? Yeah. I said yes, and then you immediately threw a hat on. What's up with that? Why didn't you do what I said? Because it was a joke. No, dude. I'm telling yeah. you, since last recording, which is approximately a week from yes today, yes, you know, week ago. Yeah. Your hair is, it looks like it's grown like three inches. It probably has. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, here we go. It's an exclusive. Exclusive for the 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 what do you call it? YouTube oh, Moses. Yeah. It's there. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't matter. I could I could do this. And I, do do I look like what's his name from Dodgeball? Oh oh oh. Uh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you do kind of. Um, that's hilarious. I saw some videos of. <clears throat> it shows uh, the kids that are playing video games through this whole quarantine thing, and it shows their hair afterwards, <clears throat> and there's like an indentation in their head um, the, because they had headphones on the whole time from these that's gonna be you dude yeah i'm telling you you should do like a uh like an emo thing where you have it like hanging like down in front of one eye and you just start listening to like my chemical romance or something a great band what are you talking about oh. is that a joke yeah well yeah. there we go so Anything new this week? I know you went fishing. Did you catch anything? Did you uh, fall in? What happened? I saw one jump. That was about it. That's exciting. I know. I think I'm going to try and go on Monday, though. Somewhere up here. That'd be cool. You haven't done anything up there yet, have you? No, not yet. And I know you sent me a picture of your spot, man. I might... Here I am in like a frozen out of grocery store and you're sending me like this serene picture of this nice looking, you know, it's bigger than a pond, but smaller than I would say a lake, but it is a yeah. lake. But it's like, when I think of a lake, I think of like Tahoe, you know, or Clear Lake or a bigger lake, but I'm like, and there's like the water's like glass and you can like see right through to the bottom. I'm like, oh man, I want to be there so bad. Yeah, it was nice. Got to take the whole family out for that one. <laughs> So, well, they were all yeah. there for that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Did yeah, they have fun? fun? I mean, kids ran around. I fished, tried to fish. That's why they call it fishing, not catching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Ooh, boy, tough crowd. Yeah. Maybe next time it'll just be the wife and I. Yeah. Every single yeah. time I went fishing, like with my dad, he ended up like fishing me out of the water because I'd always like fall in and just like cause more problems. <laughs> yeah that uh that was that was a possibility yeah this one but one kind of did but we grabbed her everything's go. good yeah you, you, save, save the world dude you're like a modern day superhero there is one thing i want to talk about though do it uh have you seen the show on amazon called upload okay Steph has my wife. She's seen it. Um, it is crazy. Um, yeah. I've, I've seen parts of it. I know the premise of it, but if you want to tell our fine listeners about the show, you can. Uh, so 
let's see, how do I say this? I feel like this has been done before. I can't remember what movie it was, but I feel like this type, maybe it was a book I read or something like that. Might have been a book I read. I told my wife it reminded me of um, a little bit of the show The Good Place. Yeah, I um, haven't seen that. With, um, what's the other show? Like The Island. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of like that. There, There's some, it's, it's a comedy, but it's it has some like serious moments too. Yeah, but, it does. But go ahead and tell them what it's about. Um, so... In the future, there's like self-driving cars and weird stuff. And um, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of aspects that go into it. But for the most part, it's about um, you can now take your consciousness before you die and upload it basically to the Internet. And it's a type of like retreat for you. They, they like have afterlife travel agents to where you can pick where you want to go. Um, and if you're rich, you can go to the nice places. If you're poor, then you only get like two gigs a month to use while you're there. And if you go beyond that, you like freeze until the next month where you get your, your next set of gigs. And, um, it's a very interesting show. I I binge watched it in like a day and a half the whole season, but it's very good. Yeah, I, I was. Think- I remember I was cooking dinner and I don't want to give anything away, but I'm sitting here and it was the very first episode. And if I remember correctly, you have to like let them know ahead of time, like they, cause they have to upload you while you're still alive. Yeah. Um, They got to get your consciousness somehow. I don't know. I don't, I forget how it works, but so the guy had to make a a quick decision, like whether he's going to get uploaded or not. that part was so funny. <laughs> I'm sitting here cooking dinner and I hear also I hear a like that. And my wife goes, Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you guys what happened, but I look at the TV. I'm like, Oh, that's my kind of show right there. <laughs> I mean, if you know, I like horror movies. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and she was laughing. I was like, Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. But it, the premise of it is uh, really interesting. And I think it's, it's written by, uh, the office guy the office guy um yeah. i forget his name man it's like greg something but he wrote it so there's good acting i think it's good um, yeah it's pretty good and like so the guy while he's in his virtual world um which looks like you know it, it, it's kind of campy you know certain things are like just off you know um kind of like what you would think of a virtual world i mean it looks like a real world but it, like you would have like every waiter would look the same yeah, or, all the the what do you call it? Like the bellhop guys at the hotel. Yeah, they're all the same. Um, and he can like split into multiple. Yeah, and then uh, the but he could he could actually communicate with like a customer service representative of the company he's uploaded for. Oh yeah, that's a big part of the show too. I that's forgot. A huge part of the show. Yeah. yeah. So um, they get they get alive. angels. <clears throat> they call yeah. them angels. So whenever they have a question, they could just say like, "Hey, angel." <laughs> And they'll either pop up or they can hear them talking. Yeah. So. Yeah. Recommend that one. Um, I know she watched it and, and she really enjoyed it. She's already done with it. Um, oh, there's going to be a season two. Like it ended on a huge cliffhanger. No joke. I, I see. I, I, I popped in and out of it. So I don't even know what the end was. I just saw like bits and pieces. I know the premise enough to like know that I'm one of these days I want to watch it. And my wife's pretty good about things like that. She'll, like watch something like a full season or something or series, I guess Netflix will have like eight episodes or whatever. Yeah. And then she goes, let's watch that. That's kind of what we're doing right now with Bates Motel. I watched it a long time ago and I suggested it to her. Now we're watching it together. But um, yeah. You- and this one's pretty easy to watch too. Cause it's only half an hour episodes. So yeah. Have you seen uh, the Netflix series dead to me? No, I have not. That's a good one. Um, season two released like last week we're already done with it um i don't know how to talk about it without giving anything away uh it's christina applegate and um uh, i think her name's linda Carn- carnellini she played uh you know she was in what freaks and geeks she was also in um that um scooby-doo movie she was the one with the glasses oh. um 
but basically like Christina Applegate's husband gets like hit by a car and dies and she befriends Linda Carnalini and then it turns out that um Linda Carnalini they, they didn't know each other when they're at like this support group thing but it turns out like Linda Carnalini was in the car that killed Christina Applegate's husband oh um but there there's this, there's a lot of funny things that happen in it, but it's like, it's kind of, it reminds me a little bit of upload because it's, it, it, it has a lot of seriousness to it, but then there's a lot of funny parts and Christina Applegate is hilarious in it. Like, like I remember her as in like, um, married with children, you know, just kind of being stupid and ditzy. This one, she's like kind of smart, but like, she is like foul. <laughs> like she reminds me of, uh, like Jennifer Aniston in, um, horrible bosses. I'm going to say, hold on. <coughs> Man. Yeah, not editing that out. No, I got. <sighs> my cat is running around, and yeah, I I get I love my cat, but I get kind of uh, allergic to her every now and then. But so dead to me and upload, recommend both those, and you could binge those fairly quick because dead to me is thirty minute episodes too. Yeah, there's only ten episodes of upload, so. Man, there's two seasons of Dead to Me. You always have to start at season one to understand what's going on in season two. And there's only one season of Upload right now because that's a new series. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I'm, I might have to start watching that again. Um, so, yeah, do you want to get into our world famous segment? Oh, you mean the... Uh... Beers and Cheers. yeah so um i'll just i'll just start this one off for me because i'm very very boring but i'm once again drinking my aha water again Mm -hmm. um and speaking of that real quick um i went up to your house uh last week to grab some mother's day cookies that were amazing by the way yeah Um, she's uh she's pretty good at that yeah, she man, I'm I'm telling you, I'm, I tell her like, those are excellent, and she's all really. I'm like, come on, you know they're good, and yeah. she's like, no, I don't think so. I, I'm like, hey, they're fan, and they looked awesome. Like the, like you literally thought like you could buy these at like one of those um, shops. Like if you go to like Mendocino and there's like like a custom made cookie store, you could buy these at like a like a one of those cookie stores. It has like that what's called royal icing, where it's like hand drawn pictures on the cookie it they're good yeah. and i taste one tasted like vanilla and the other one was a sherbet oh the oh. sherbet one's my favorite oh oh yeah and you know what i had one i had to have it and she makes she makes like a strawberry lemonade one too oh, yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's some good stuff right there but when i was up there um she gave me one of those uh black cherry coffees of your ahas oh how, how did you like it? I'm like, you know, this is going to be weird. This is going to be weird. I'm not going to like it. She was, um, but it, she, get, it was, obviously it wasn't cold. So when I got home, I put it in the fridge. And later that night, I uh, went to drink it. And I was like, holy smokes, that was really good. I know. I told you. Um, because it doesn't, it ha- doesn't have an overpowering taste of coffee, just a little bit at the end. And so uh, right now. It safe. smells like coffee, though. Yeah. Right now at Safeway, you have uh, buy two cases, you get two free. Well, I bought two cases of the black cherry coffee. Yeah, and you get your caffeine from it too. Yeah, so the, there's two caffeine ones. There's the citrus green tea one that I drink. Um, I drink one of these every morning, and it's just enough caffeine to get me going. And then uh, the black cherry coffee one, so I could just alternate. Dude, good suggestion. You I know. know. Horrible choice in film sometimes, but your uh, <laughs> your your my film selection is on point. Yeah, I don't know, mm. <laughs> uh, Mister Lavalantula Sharknado boy. There's nothing wrong with those. <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, I'm not sure if you have HBO now or anything like that, but the Meg is on there. Oh yeah, I know. I'm gonna watch that again. There's some good ones that are on there right now. I got it up here where I'm, where I'm at now. Yeah, we, my daughter and I just watched. Uh, well, I've seen it before, but she hasn't seen it. The new Godzilla. 
Oh yeah, I watched that too. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Like the, those <clears throat> monster fight scenes are just that's everything I want in a monster movie. It's just major destruction of cities and like everything like that and I love it. I still haven't seen Rampage though. Rampage was pretty good. I, I mean, it's a corny monster movie. But that's, but, uh, that one's based off the video game, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that was one of my favorite video games. They got to remake that. Oh, we'll get to something later about games. So, now what what are you uh, drinking? Not today because you're working, but uh, what did you drink the other day? So I went to Thin Line again because I don't really have time to go anywhere else. Love those guys. Um, do yes. Where is it? Oh, I found it. I tried, which just came out, I think, yesterday. Some stuff got posted yesterday on their Facebook. I, th- I think they released it yesterday, like, technically. Um, but it's called Opposite of Ordinary, and it's a New Zealand IPA. And from what he told me, the New Zealand is just because it's it's used with all New Zealand hops. And... Oh, he doesn't have them. Oh, yeah, he does. Uh, Pacific Gem, Dr. Rudy, and White White Edy hops. They're all from New Zealand, I guess. White Edy and Very Berry Aroma. Very Berry. Oh, yes. It's got it's it's a little bit fruity, but it's still pretty uh, bitter. So, I mean, it has a good bitter finish to it. Um, I liked it. I would definitely get more um and it's something that i would i would pick if somebody said hey this is on the menu um i'd probably give it a 4.75 4.75 did you see the picture on uh, facebook of the beer yeah yeah i'm really confu- i'm really confused by it because i'm i'll show the camera is that picture flipped or is that like one of those things where you like mix oil with water and the things say so? Cause that you'll was, never know. I saw that mall. That is some sort of wizardry right there. Yeah. Um, that was, that was a very, I was there when the picture was taken <laughs> and they're trying to figure out like what to do for it. So, Oh, so you, you know, the ins and outs of that, huh? Mm hmm. Wow, like and I'm, you'll just if you want to know, you'll just have to go and ask them. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely go see them. Um, and they just got their uh, new parking lot updated, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna make over. I saw they posted a picture of the front of the building, and it had like a bunch of like yellow tape. I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> like it looked like I'm like no, and then it's, and then people responded said saying the thing i was thinking like oh i thought it was like police like tape like don't like like a murder scene but i think they're just getting their black top wow sh- straight to murder huh <laughs> first thing i think of dude sorry but i know those thin line they won't let that happen you're not right there um but yeah it looks like it was released thursday oh yeah the um opposite of ordinary I'm just looking at the thing right now. That's cool. I, I'm still trying to. That, sorry, that picture is like confusing me. I think I know how it's done. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should go there and get some chips and salsa and then ask. It's yeah. like a ma- magician giving away his secrets. And he is. He is uh, actually uh, was there while he was brewing, and I'm excited for this next one because I've only ever had one of these before, and it was for a special occasion. So I'm not sure if I liked it a lot because of the special occasion, but I'm I'm excited to try the one he's making. Oh, okay. So stay tuned for some more. Yeah. Because we know that you'll try it. <laughs> so Probably. cool. So 4.75 out of 5. And Thin Line, go check them out. Um, they're open every day, I think, right? They're, they don't have a day they're closed, right? I think they do. I think they're closed. At least one day. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. Oh, check, I'm on the website. Check uh-huh. the website for 
for listings or whatever, whatever they used to say on TV with that, you know, you'd call, you know? Yeah. So, so with that, uh, that's our beers. Um, and then with our cheers this week, um, we've been slacking pretty hard on, um, recognizing, uh, law enforcement and today is uh, national police week. Um, the last day, the last day. And it just so happens to fall on our recording day. Um, so I want to give this a, a full on cheers to all the police out there. Um, you know, um, you know, ones that have, that are no longer with us and ones that are currently with us as well. Um, I checked, uh, officer down Memorial page this morning and like the first, like five, um, officers that have died, um, were all COVID-19 related. Um, and some of them were from that Lansing, uh, correctional center. I think that's in Texas. I can't remember. They had like an outbreak in there. And, yeah. And so, you know, when we, when we say police week, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how they define it, but like I, I, I bundle correctional officers and with that, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, like I said before, they're a big part of the, 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 the system and, you know, they get the short end of the stick, you know, cause like I said before, the, when, when, if you're a street cop in a city or CHP or whatever, and then you bring in, uh, you know, someone to intake and your correction officer, that person's mad at that cop and they automatically write, it's like a transfer of hate from that cop to you and you had nothing to do with their arrest. And it's like, I'm like, Hey, just cause we wear a badge does not mean, you know, say that guy was a jerk to that person. It does not mean I'm going to be a jerk to you, but the, the, it's not like right when you get there or right when they get there, they're automatically, all right, I'm calm now. I'm not with that cop anymore. So just want to cheers all the police and, um, just all law enforcement across the board. Uh, you know, FBI is a little hanky right now. I don't know what's going on with those guys, but they're still FBI. You know, like I said, you have bad seeds in every profession, but a majority of ever majority of um, police are good. Like a good, like 99%. It's like a small percentage that are bad, but you know, we're wanting to cheers all the good ones today. And um, you know, I, I know that I think they would, this is the first year they had to cancel the, the memorial, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I forget how long it's been going, but yeah, first year. I mean, but the, it, I feel like there's, you still see a lot of the support like social media wise. Yeah. And that's good. Like, it's not like it was a, Oh, we're canceling it. And people forgot. There's still people yeah. that remember and they recognize it and they they pay their respects and everything. And it's, good to see that yeah i know um aj johnson um and ryan tillman from the it's Nita podcast they usually go every year so does like officer daniels and mike the cop and all them they, they always go and um they they said it's kind of weird to not be able to go um because that's like kind of one thing that they look forward to every year because they they're they're amongst like their brothers and sisters and uh you know, but I'm, I'm sure everything will go back to normal and we'll, they'll have it again. And, but, um, um, if you guys want to like get a little insight into what goes through police officers heads and how they make decisions and stuff like that. And the factors involved, if you listen to this need podcast, I think it's like episode 47. It's like a passion, passionate something. I think is the title, but that is a very good um, look into what officers go through every day, and um, it gets pretty deep. So, be yeah, ready it's for that. Forty-seven, and uh, I know Ryan. Ryan uh, goes off on the episode because uh, he got to a boiling point where um, he just got tired of like all the hate, and I'm telling you. If you listen to, I mean, listen to us, of course, but if you're in law enforcement, wanting to go in law enforcement, past law enforcement, curious about law enforcement, or just want to be a better person, I know somewhere in there, you, we, we all fall on that last one. Listen to that podcast because there's things that they apply 
in those uh, episodes that will motivate you all the time. And, you know, it, it's just, that's probably, that's like my go-to podcast I listen to when I just want to like a pick me up, get away from all the COVID-19 stuff. And then you also got to listen to AJ's story about him getting his shorts ripped off in that um, wave the wave um, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was pretty funny. I, I was crying. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, just do a, do a quick little recap real quick of the ODMP. So it's officer down Memorial page. So far, there has been 78 deaths, um, 18 gunfire. That's down 10%. Um, 21 are auto-related. That's up 17%. Man, people drive better, please. And then 39 is other. I have a feeling that that's going to be um, a lot that's of that. COVID. COVID. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like I said, one's too many. Um, but 21 auto-related. I mean, a lot of that is... Like there was one that was a motorcycle cop the other day and, but he died, um, I think on his own personal bike, just got in an accident. Um, just look out for motorcycles. You know, they, you know, if they're cutting you off, don't be a jerk and try to cut them off, you know, cause they're going to lose that battle every time. And I know like sometimes, you know, people that ride motorcycles ride like jerks, but just understand that like your road rage will kill them. It's not like an, if it's, it's will. If, if you hit them on their bike, um, if they're driving like jerks, they'll get caught. It'll, 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 it's not, you're not the rule of the road. And who, who do you know, or how do you know that they're not responding to a call? Right. Um, you know, just move over. If you see someone, you know, whether it's CHP on the road, tow truck, whoever, um, move over, slow down, uh, just, I mean, I still do that thing where I drive through the intersection, even though I have a green light, I still look left and right. Cause I mean, I'm on the road every day and I, I, at least three times a day, I'll see like someone run a red light. Like, man, if I did not just take that extra couple seconds to look left or right, I would have gotten T-boned and just take that little bit of extra time. And, you know, that way you could send someone home back to their families, you know, cause you don't want to have, um, you know, you don't want to be the cause, the reason why someone's not going home and why their kids can't see their family again. So just be safe. I mean, I stress that enough. I mean, thank God I've never had a, you know, a ticket in my life. Like I said, I'm, I'm a rule follower. Um, I mean, hopefully I never get a ticket. Um, but if I do, I probably deserved it. <clears throat> um, but you know, we, we could, just if if you're especially nowadays, like I said this morning, or not not this morning, but every morning, uh, our freeways right now are like the Indianapolis 500. Like the cars are flying. Like man, there's no one on the road. So like, why are you like rushing to get somewhere? Wake up a little bit earlier. Be responsible. You know, don't like like an emerge like what was that saying? Um, like I'm like uh, what was it like I'm failure on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on mine. Like, so I shouldn't have to like move over and do all this stuff just because you want to quickly get to work because you didn't set yourself up uh, properly in the morning to get to work on time. That's on you. Wake up earlier, be responsible, go to bed a little bit earlier. So, I mean, it's funny because these are the things that we tell kids, but we have to re remind adults sometimes that they have to do it too. So but um, cheers to all of the police and all law enforcement across the, I believe police week is world, right? It's not just America. Is it, is this world? I'm not sure. Well, you know what? I have we're to gonna, look into that. We're going to do um, police in America, but we're going to include that in the world right now. Okay. Okay. I think there it is. So Cool. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to go to a really odd transition here. Oh. <laughs> um, so we all know about the, um, I wanted to get your take on this. We all know about what happened in um, Parkland with the school shooting. Yeah. In Florida. Well, um, there was that famous deputy who was there. I think he was a school resource officer. And when the shooting happened, he didn't call anybody. He hid behind his car. 
he put on his vest and he didn't go into the firefight while kids were getting slaughtered. Well, he was fired. Then just this week, he was reinstated, hired again, and got all of his back pay. And his back pay is like $137,000. That's how much he makes a year. And um, part of me is like, well, man, you know, there's, there's a, like, if I know there's like an active shooter, I'm obviously, you know, I'm not going to go on by myself, right? You got to be smart about it. But at the same time, you have a radio where you could call and get stuff out. That's what you do. And that wasn't done. And while kids are just getting like murdered. Now, my question for you is, how would you like to be in a department with that guy? Knowing that he got hired back. Um, yeah, so that one, who knows this guy? I think he was older, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think this school resource officer was kind of like his, his, he was on the way out gig, I'm guessing. Um, Ready for so, retirement? Yeah. So maybe um, this guy back in the day, he, he was a great officer. He's one of the ones who would run into it. But I feel like that is your job and he did nothing. Yeah. He, he doesn't deserve his job back. You know, like, yeah, people make mistakes sometimes, but that, that was a big mistake. You know, that literally could have saved lives. Yeah. And, um, when something like that happens, you know, definitely shouldn't get his job back. Um, his, the pay thing. I mean, if they're going to reinstate him, I guess that would mean they found nothing wrong with what he did. Yeah, I, apparently. Or there's just not enough to, uh, like, if they were to fire him, they would have a bigger lawsuit. So it'd be cheaper just to hire him back and maybe fire him for something else. I don't know. But I would love to be a fly in the wall <clears throat> in that locker room when he's there and just hear all those other deputies, like, what they have to say to him. Yeah. And then, I mean, I didn't, I didn't look too much into it and maybe this was a thing. The media blew up bigger than it really was. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you either way. Cause I don't, I didn't really look into it, but that, that is running through my mind. Cause like, why, why would you bring that person back on? Yeah. It, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I would love to hear, um, you know, some of our law enforcement friends chime in on what they would do in that situation. Like, not what they would do, but how would they feel if one of their former colleagues did that and then was hired back? What do you think the morale would be in that department? Um, I wouldn't... Um, I don't know if that's a department I want to work for. I mean, Broward County Sheriff, I mean, th that sheriff was already under fire for a lot of the decisions he made already. Um, but that that one act by that one deputy kind of tainted that department already. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, like, what, what the morale would be. Um, how How would you handle it? Would you just be like, oh, well, whatever. Or would you like actively try to be like, no, like this guy is a danger. Like he's obviously not willing to do his duty anymore and he needs to be gone. Cause I mean, I I've seen um, videos of police officers running into burning buildings when they're not a firefighter. I've seen videos of firefighters tackling a suspect to help a cop. I've seen them going above and beyond their job. This guy hid behind like a golf cart and put on his bulletproof vest and didn't even call anybody. Like when, when it came, when it was go time, like he didn't do, do what he was supposed to do. Cause I remember all the police agencies I ever applied for. Um, even like when I was working for Loomis, one of the questions is if your life is in danger, are you willing to take the life of someone who's either like take, like who's a threat to your life? And it is, you, you're going to answer. Yeah, you have to do it. And I remember that that first time I ever, you know, at Loomis, when I was, that guy was walking up to me with his hand in his jacket in July, I made that decision. Like if this guy pulls his hand out quickly, I will shoot him. And of course I was calm during that time. But afterwards, when he started laughing away, 
I got back in the truck, dude, I had tears in my eyes. I was like, I can't believe we just made a decision to take someone's life. Like, like I was, I was going to do it. There was no going to con it. Like, if he took one step more, like, it was a decision. It was the weirdest thing ever, the weirdest feeling, and knowing how close I was in that moment. And then also knowing that if I would have, I would have been held at fault. He had nothing. Or at least I knew he had nothing after the fact. But, you know, I didn't know. He could have still had something and made a decision not to do anything. But I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, your, your life is made in a decision in a matter of seconds. And that cop, like, I, I, I mean, I don't know personally if it was, if it was me and I'm hearing, especially kids, um, getting just like, you know, picked off one by one in high school. I'm, I'm, and that was my job as a school resource officer. I would run in, uh, I would call it in and I would, I would try my hardest. I mean, this is just me, you know, I don't have any police training or whatever, but I would try my um, best to, you know, find like, you know, an advantage on the guy. I mean, granted, I believe he had an AR-15. I don't think the school resource officer had anything but like his, his, you know, sidearm. But I'm just like, it's also easier for me to say now than in the moment. But um, man, that was your job. And you could have saved maybe one extra life. And that, that one extra life is an entire family that wouldn't be grieving. And he yeah. failed. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the way I feel about it too. And I know like in active shooter situations, when you get there, like you're going in. That's that's how it, how you're trained. Like there could be two of you, but you're going in. You're not sitting there waiting to like build up a team. You go. Yeah. Um because it's an active shooter. This person's actively killing people or trying to kill people. So you need to stop the threat as soon as you can. Yeah. And well, I want to do one of these things and I want to do it for the podcast. Um, just to report back on, um, I think that would be actually, well, they probably won't be doing it now just because of the fact that there's, they don't have enough, they don't want to put kids in school. Um, but every, I think it's every year they do active shooter training at like college campuses when they're out of session in high schools and stuff. And they'll like, you know, get like volunteers to come in there and one person will act like a shooter, one person, and then there's a bunch of kids that are just running around like crazy to, to, and this is all for the law enforcement. Um, and then, so when you hear the shooting going off, like the kids are running around frantic, they're trying to like make it as chaotic as possible for the officers. Cause that's what they walk into is pure chaos. And I would love to, uh, if not like be part of like the volunteer team to like be like a victim or the shooter just to see like what it's like uh in that situation because i know that um i've seen uh, pictures um i've seen some videos of it and it is just nuts like um it's kind of like what you see like in movies when um bomb goes off and everyone's running out one door but then the cops are all running inward and you don't know who's who so you're like yeah who, who, who is this person the shooter is the person the shooter and i mean looking back at old footage of like columbine i'm like man that is just pure chaos and just to see what goes through their minds and um that's the reason why when 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 cops are screaming at everyone like let me see your hands get on the ground and you're saying i didn't do anything just freaking get on the ground because they're not going to believe you you know just get on the ground do what they say you'll be fine as long as you're not the shooter you know, but, um, and I think, you know, majority of the time though, which is kind of sad, those most, most of those, uh, active shooters, school shootings, I think are, um, usually, uh, suicide missions on, because they don't want to live through it. So they just take as many people with them as they possibly can, which is kind of sad. So, and that would be going to the parents at that point. Keep, keep an eye on your kids, man. Love them. If your kid's going through a hard time, talk to them. You know, try to get them help because a lot of the time the, um, uh, you know, there's a, if you look at like all the school shooters, like photos, the ones that are alive, they all have like the same look to them. They're just like crazy. And you can't tell me like, oh, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. There's gotta be something else in there. And you know, just, you know, love on your kids and give them attention. And if, if you feel like they might be a danger, get them help and then man lock up your gun yeah a lot of times right oh well i didn't i just needed to unlock you know because you know, what if i needed it well 
you done messed up a a ron that's your problem right there you should be held somewhat accountable for that yeah so. and um when i was in <clears throat> when i was in the academy we did active shooter training there which it was just training but still like the scenarios that we were going through, it was pretty intense and it messes with your head too, even just the training. And I know um, where I went to the academy at the department up there, one of them put on a huge active shooter training for all the law enforcement and first responders. And I think it took place in the mall that was up there and they closed the mall down. They had, um, I think they had like some munitions and everything. So it was pretty realistic. They went and had like makeup done on people for mm -hmm. injuries and stuff like that. And when you go into one of those, they tell you, remember when you're going in there, your job is to stop the shooter. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be walking by people who could be dying on the ground, like bleeding out or something like that. People that you would normally run up and like try and help, but you need to separate that and realize that you have a job to do and it's not helping those people right now you're helping everyone else by stopping the threat that is going on yeah so well the I, way can only, I can only imagine what it'd be like in a real situation like having to walk by those people for uh for real mm -hmm. the way that i uh describe it to people is there's that thing in high school called every 15 minutes um yeah. and then um basically it you know you have like a helicopter that'll actually land at your high school you'll have um, kids that are bloody and then um, you'll have uh, they'll even announce it like to um, um, like I think they put micro they might even put microphones on like the firemen or whatever um, to uh, um, so you can hear them like giving chest compressions and like call out the death time um, I know um, the toy stallion did it we had an episode where we talked about that and that was very valuable to me uh, in high school was seeing just actually seeing that unfold in front of me to make it as realistic as possible. It's kind of like the modern day red asphalt. If you remember that in driver's ed um, where you see pictures of people's brains hanging out of the car because they made a bad decision. And, and I think it's important to see that obviously not see it as a, um, like a gore porn type thing, like where you're watching it in uh, like a movie and just like saw or anything like that. But you're seeing it as more of coming from an educational purposes of this is real life. This is what we're dealing with. Um, which was, you know, kind of a weird little segue here. Um, like during Vietnam, you know, was like America's first uh, real televised uh, viewings of torture and like gore and um, death. Was that that's what you saw on tv and that inspired like the director of texas chainsaw massacre to make texas chainsaw massacre and so you 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 see a lot of that a lot of that span from that so they were so now like when you watch tv you're kind of desensitized to some of that stuff i mean there's some things i'll watch on tv i'm like oh no that looked way too real but um i think it should bother you to a certain extent to see stuff like that um and I know um, you have that what's called gallows humor where, you know, you'll, you'll, you have to laugh certain things off, but that's what keeps people going. But um, that's not so much for us. Um, that's for people like, you know, law enforcement and first responders because they see like some crap and they have to process it. And so they process it like that at that time to get them through. Then they have their ways of processing it afterwards, whether it be in just take a, a, a few weeks off to, compress or decompress and reevaluate themselves but i don't know like when i i just going back to the police week thing i always remember i can't remember what college it was but i always see pictures of like because they always had all the kids running out with their hands up like this and so it's funny because um going back to a past episode too where we're talking about this one store owner who said that you know they're not heroes but when you see everyone going one direction with their hands up but you see cops running the other direction towards harm's way how can you say they're not heroes yeah, I, there's no way like all those firefighters that were going into a burning building on 9 11 knowing that one building already fell how can you tell me those guys aren't heroes and that's what gets me mad i'm like 
would I run in that person in that building? Probably not. Cause I'm a different, I, I'm not, it takes a special person to do that. And when you, when, when people do that, they have my utmost respect. And then when I see this Parkland deputy who hides behind a golf car, I'm all, I have no respect for you. Absolutely none. When I'm looking at on officer down Memorial page of people that died from gunfire who ran towards that fight and who didn't, second guess they ran towards that knowing full well what may happen you know and it did happen but they made that choice to not be a coward and i think that's what it what it boils down to so let's move on to something happy because i could go on that for days <laughs> so um oh, that wasn't your happy face <laughs> oh no i was just starting to get fired up yeah. i mean after last episode we need to switch gears <laughs> Um, so, um, I, a few episodes ago, we were talking about Tony Hawk and I said how, uh, man, they should remake that for PS4. Yeah. And you're all, they did. Well, I don't think they did, but they are now and uh -huh. it's coming out, I think September. It is the original Tony Hawk with the original like landscapes and stuff, but it looks real. Like same people. I don't know if it's, uh, same, you mean same skaters? Yeah. I think it's the same skaters. They have, I think, the same music, just done like in more uh, better sound. Um, so like you have the levels where you're like in that little warehouse or whatever, or Burnside, wherever it was. It, it's yeah. So take those, gra remember those graphics from Tony Hawk, and then now think of our new Spider-Man game that we got with those. Oh man, graphics. it's redone and it's done in 4K. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, you know. Yeah. I'm getting that. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a PS4 Pro now. Yeah. I'm, and a new TV because yeah. I don't have 4K TV. Oh, I do, but I don't have a 4K player. Oh. Is that what the PS4 Pro is? It's 4K? Yeah. Yeah, because um, I, I have a 4K TV, um, but my I just have the PS4, not the PS4 Pro. And I was like, well, maybe, I, and then me being an idiot, I have a Blu-ray player, a 3D Blu-ray player, but I don't have a 3D Blu-ray TV. So I'm like, man, what do I have a TV? Oh, man, it's so expensive. Um, but I don't know. I got really excited about Tony Hawk because um, that that's a fun game. Brings uh, back some memories. Oh, man. I, I would play that for hours. And the funny thing is, is it's a game that you can play with your, with your kids. It's not violent. And, and sometimes it's funny because you're like, you're flying off these buildings and you're just like, whoa. And then you like you yeah. hit the ground and like skid, but there's no blood it's a fun game um so i'm pretty pumped about that one um but uh i finally beat doom yesterday it's about time Oof, man, you that, said you were on the final boss last week yeah and i finally beat it last night it it was it was something else yeah it was it was it was tough but um that's a fun game i gotta let you borrow it don't play that one around the kids oh okay and they say like dismemberment of demons which I'm all for, honestly. Demons are bad people. That could be educational. It could be, you know. <clears throat> I should teach that in Sunday school. Yes. <laughs> Today we're learning about Bring. the Slayer and the Marauder, and we're gonna yeah. see Bring pictures. You, we're gonna see how you could disembowel demons through a spike through their um, chin and pull their eye out through their top of their head and then back in again and make them eat their ball eyeball. And they're like, <laughs> um, "Mommy, I want to go home. Tommy's scaring me." <laughs> Um, so another thing I want to talk about, um, I just want to pull this up real quick so I can see, um, here it is. Um, baseball may be coming back. Um, however, it's going to be, uh, it'd be televised, which I'm all for because I just want to see baseball. I just, I'm, I'm not seriously I'm sports right now in general now, but they're saying it's going to be televised, um, from empty ballparks. Which, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're an Oakland A's fan, no big deal, right? Um, <laughs> you're used to that one. Shots fired. Wow. <laughs> um, get that podcast insurance on that one. We may have lost a viewer. Um, a viewer. Yeah, just a viewer. Um, but, uh, I mean, you, you and I have both been to baseball games. We've both been pretty close to the action. And my thing is, is like, man, if you've ever been to, a, especially like a basketball game and you're close to the court, um, 
there's a reason why uh, you hear the crowds on TV pretty loud uh, because there is some stuff being said on court. <laughs> I mean, they're smack talking big time and yeah. you know, it would be, it's, it's not safe for anybody. Um, but I'm like, man, that'd be so cool to like actually hear that. Like, you know, like, you know, baseball, like hearing the chatter that's out there, hearing the catcher, like talk crap about the, you know, the hitter's mom or whatever. I would love to hear that. So they're saying they want to broadcast to empty stadiums and seats, but they also, um, I think, uh, MLB, I think it was, was they're saying they're going to pipe in crowd noise. I'm like, why would you do that? Seems weird. Why would you do that? I mean, to me, it would. I don't think it'd be much different than um, watching like a um, like a low level baseball team play in Triple A or not Triple A spring training. You'll have maybe a few people there because you, you'll hear the teams cheering them cheering themselves on. So you'll hear that. I would. I think it'd be kind of cool because you know why make it at this point? You know we've already been locked down for two months now. Why don't? Why are we going to act like it? It's normal, like 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 that. Let's go that way. Ten years from now, we could play these, you know, games on YouTube. Say, oh man, remember this time when there was like no crowd there? Look, look how different it was compared to now. Man, just if there there can't be any crowds there, you know, why try to make it like what it was? Just have no crowds, you know, and yeah. and, and don't try to fake it. Just play. And I also don't watch the game for the crowds. I, I watch yeah. it for the game. And are they going to like play the crowd noise over the speakers at the stadium? So the players feel like there's people there. That would be weird. Well, it'll be like old school video games where you look in the crowd and it's like, it looks like a cardboard cutout just going back and <laughs> forth. <laughs> well, I think LeBron was saying something like he does. He doesn't, I don't think he said he doesn't want to play because crowd noise is like 95% of the game. Like, like that's what you feed off of, which I agree. I mean, man, like when, when you're like, you know, in a rally and you're doing good, that's what pumps you up. But, you know, times are a little bit different right now. LeBron, you know, I'm sorry that you, you know, are not wanting to take your millions of dollars you make every year just to play a few extra games. So they're thinking about doing like a shortened season um, for baseball, like strictly like in Arizona, um, 70 games, I think, which is, isn't that like almost like a full basketball season? Yeah, there's somewhere around there. So I think baseball is like 162, something like that. Yep. Um, and then I think there's like 80 something in, in basketball. But I was like, man, just just play. I mean, people, I mean, dude, in reality, you're an entertainer. That's what you get paid for us to do. You, we pay you to watch you do what you do. Yeah. Just entertain, you know. That's what you're, you're supposed to be out doing. Um, you're still going to get your money. But MLB um, – if they don't do it this season, the reason why they're wanting to do televised one is because I think they have contracts with um, like the, the television uh, stations that if they don't televise this year, regardless, I mean, it's a contract, they will owe money to all these stations because they're in contract with airing the games. So they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Well, we want to do this, but then you have some baseball players. I forget who, who it was, but one pitcher says, I don't feel safe playing. Well, dude, you're throwing a ball. Like the guy is definitely six feet away from you. I'm on. If you guys all got tested and you guys are all fine, then dude, you'll be fine. I'm like, and I really don't think, dude, if I haven't gotten it right now at grocery stores, I don't think I'm going to get it. No. You know, and it's, uh, I think it's been blown a little out of proportion. Yeah. And so I'm like, dude, just, you know, if I'm working for my little pay that I'm, you know, getting right now, dude, you could throw a baseball for your, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year. You could, you could do it. You'll be fine. You know? Yeah. So that's all I have for that. But, um, Wilson, all I got to say is we've officially been a podcast for a year. Well, in like two days we will be. Yeah. But when people hear this, yeah. You know, so I'm pretty pumped about that, dude. That that's, that was, a uh, when I saw that on my phone, I'm like, wow, it's been a year now. Granted, yeah. this would be episode technically, I think episode 49, 
because if, if, if we're going to do like a little review, um, those of you who haven't been with us since the beginning. So um, we have about, we have as many uh, episodes as it's needed and far. It less. came, it came uh, pretty close to one a week. We're only off by three. Yeah. Only off by three. We had to take a couple of weeks. I can't remember what those were for. Um, so this, this episode that comes out will technically be our 50th episode, but um, so we would be off by two. Oh, wow. Which, you know, I'm happy with that. I think that's pretty good. Um, dude, you know, we want to do a quick little year in review real quick. Um, a lot of you guys might remember um, our first episode, you know, we were called American Noise. Which, oh, yeah. Which I forget still, about that sometimes. Which is still, I, I, I miss that name. I do too. It was, it was a good name. Great name because it was exactly what we were uh, about. I had stickers made, business cards made, everything. Logos, you know. A custom logo. That logo was sweet. Yeah. Um, and then we got a email saying yeah. we had to stop using that name because, uh, what was it? Uh, was... Uh, intellectual property. Yeah. And I'm like, well, like, and we looked up his, this guy's, information and he has a website and um that hasn't been used in over like two three years and we're like, I, I actually looked at it the other day and it has the same exact stuff on that it had before yeah like it hasn't changed i'm like why does it matter if we use the name i'm all we're, we're not portraying and, and he wasn't a podcast there was no podcast with that name at all yeah and we because we searched for that forever and and we're like, well, what if we just change the name to American Noise Podcast? He goes, no. I'm like, dude, like you're killing us. And 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 basically, you know, he said, uh, I think he 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 pretty much lied to us. He goes, well, I was thinking of starting a podcast. Yeah. Well, okay. So once he said that, I'm like, well, there's I don't want to get involved in lawyers because we do this for fun. We do this for um, free, really. We I mean, we don't get paid for it. No. Um, we've met a lot of cool people along the way. Um, and you know, we all still have our normal jobs and I'm like, I don't want to, this isn't, um, I'm not gonna go pay a lawyer, um, for this to like fight this. It's, it's not worth it. Let's just change the name. And so at that point we had, we still had handy. And so handy was, um, part of the show for, I think the first like 17 shows, I think. And so I said, what about, uh, the Wilson, Tommy and handy show? And then, uh, which was kind of funny. It's kind of goofy. It sounds like a morning radio show. Um, yeah. And, you know, just, you know, things happen. Handy couldn't make it all the time. Um, and, you know, we, I still, I see him every now and saw him the other day. He looked good. Um, so I said, well, what if we just change it to the real WTH show, which still could be me and the Wilson, Tommy and Handy show. Um, but that way, cause people were, I, I was getting people to say, Hey, why is Handy's name in the show when he's not there all the time? You know, it didn't make much sense. So that I said, well, let's just, cause I was tired of answering those questions. So I said, let's just go the real WTH show. That way it could mean what the heck, you know, um, whatever you want it to mean. But I think it meant like, uh, what did we say it ended up meaning? <laughs> I think it was like Wilson, Tommy hour, something like that. Yeah. You know, Wilson, Tommy hour. Um, and then that's what we kept it as. And when we first started, man, we had like hardly any listeners. You know, we, you and I talked. We said well, our goal was to at least have four listeners. We'd be happy. Yeah. And, and I didn't really care either. I mean, if we had zero, I, would, I wouldn't have cared. It's still fun just to talk. Because, I mean, yeah. before the show, I mean, we could be honest with each other. Before the show, um, I mean, we're, you and I are still friends, but we didn't talk a whole lot. Because, you know, we were both busy at work and everything. and then. I thought of, you know, I'm like, man, it'd be so fun to do a podcast. And like a day later, if not that day, you call me and go, hey, I have an idea. You want to start a podcast? I'm like, dude, are you like Alexa? Are you like listening in on my conversation? That's weird. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. And then just like we did with the, the studio with the drums, we started from the ground up. We, um, what was that? This is my alarm to wake up because normally <laughs> this is when I wake up. <laughs> I thought you brought the little <laughs> kid toys to talk, you know, to play with when you woke up. It's got to um, be a nice noise to wake up to, not a oh. blaring. Uh, uh. 
You mean you, mean, you don't wake up to this? No. No. <laughs> that would probably make me mad all day. Yeah, you, sh- you should wake up to this. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, man, you know, we had four, like, 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 I think we started with like four listeners and we're like, oh my gosh, there's four people that actually care about what we're talking about. And, um, that was just kind of cool. And then it took off a little bit. Um, you know, what was our stats? We said, um, we have, uh, 2.6 thousand downloads now, which we're, is, we're five away from 2.6. Yeah. Which I mean, to other podcasts, it's not a lot, but to, you know, to us, what our original goal was. That's a lot, you know. I'm, I'm proud of yeah, that. Yeah, in a in a year, that's yeah, pretty a, good. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we don't have any outside promotions. We don't pay um, uh, Facebook for self promoting. We don't do that thing where all of a sudden just blast our thing on everyone's. You could pay like five dollars, and it'll automatically like put you know show up your sponsor. You see those sponsored feeds ever pop up your Facebook? Someone paid to have that happen. I hate that. I mean, nothing will make me want to not buy your product more than doing that like so i'm like i'm not gonna be that guy i want to i want people that listen to us i want it to be legit i want people to like you know word of mouth i've always believed in that um and so that's why you know we have plans in the future to do like live shows you know that way we could spread out a little bit more so people like what we're what we're saying you know they'll spread it out on their own you know and i mean if they don't they won't no big deal we we just got another download so we're only four away dude i'm happy about that thank you person who downloaded (laughs) um and then uh we're in 16 different countries which i think is pretty cool and two unknowns do you know what are those unknowns it's like skull island something (laughs) king kong's listening to us i think i i really i think it's like somebody from a vpn or something it's got to be yeah but man, you know, it, it's been, a, I was, I went back listening to some old episodes and just, it's kind of funny, you know, uh, like I went back and listened specifically to the episode where we first started talking about the coronavirus and how I was like, you and I both are all, this isn't going to be a big deal. This isn't going to be a big deal. And then next thing you know, like now, like the world's on lockdown. I'm like, Hmm, <laughs> but you know, that's why we talk, you know, and, and I could go back and review some things. And I went back and listened to our first episode and I sounded so nervous, man. So nervous. And, you know, there's some episodes that, you know, you can't win them all. Some episodes I'm like, man, that episode sucked. It wasn't <laughs> even funny. Um, but, you know, we met some cool, cool people on the way. We, we've had, we, we've always, we've known Ryan. I've known Ryan just as long as I've known you from MSR Arms. And, um, you know, he, he helped uh, get this thing started um, with, he was, he's our sponsor, you know, he's, he's he's been there you know every time we've asked him to come on you know if he was able to he's like yeah man, i'm I'm up there you know he wants to come on and uh we met a lot of awesome people in the way um scott and Corey at thin line brewing you know they've been fantastic to us um i mean so much where you get to, you go see them every week you know that's you know we've met a lot of new friends through this thing which is ultimately what we want to do i met one of your longest friends chris from germany through this whole thing so i'm like man that's that's like that's cool stuff, man. And that's what I like. You know, I like hearing stories. You know, we've had David Lewis on toy stallion. We've had your dad, um, Alan from, um, Devin guy in the heavy hold. You know, we have a lot more in store, a lot more planned for the next year. And we're not planning on, um, slowing down at all. Um, you know, there might be like a, like a week or so again, where we may not put anything out, like if, if, if it doesn't, you know, work with our schedules or whatever, but for the most part, you know, our, our main goal is to put one episode out a week. It may not be on the same day every week, like it was at the beginning, but we want to at least put one out a week. Um, you know, just, to it helps us really, you know, to decompress and, you know, talk about what's on our mind. But, uh, I mean, just, good job Wilson you know because a lot of this was was with you because if it wasn't for you know you getting the computer and um you know even the studio I mean that that's all you you know that that's uh yeah hopefully we'll we'll have a a newer better studio yeah at some point in the future yeah that one will we'll still utilize the uh the cave and then um if we get a new studio it'll be um 
custom, like 100% recessed lighting, um, actual internet in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's why my one requirement, I yeah. need internet. Um, you know, it'll be way cool. I mean, rope lighting, you know, we'll have, it'll be way cool. And like I said, like our goal for this whole thing from the beginning was to just, you know, have fun. And I've literally had fun every single episode, no matter which one it was, even, even the sad episode, like Brian Ishmael. Oh yeah. That was a memorable one. Um, you know, like that was one of my favorite ones. I could go down the line, you know, I'll spend a couple minutes here. Um, some past episodes I thought were memorable. Uh, let's see one, uh, right there. There's the, the deputy Brian Ishmael episode. That was, uh, that was intense, man. Cause that hit close to home. Uh, the one with your dad was, re was really, really good. Um, it was really good to hear his stories. Um, I got some feedback from, from people saying like, wow, that guy has like an amazing story. Like, I'm like, yeah, that's why we have people on. Cause um, everybody has a story to tell. And sometimes it's just good to just sit back and let someone talk and hear it. Um, we had our, uh, you know, our first uh, disagreement. Oh yeah. I remember that one. Um, I think the episode where it was just you and Handy were beers, Oreos, and other stuff, which was basically an hour and 36 minutes of you guys trying beer and eating different Oreos. <laughs> yep. And it was, that was a, a good one though. It was fun. It was an ASMR nightmare for me because <laughs> all I kept hearing was, yeah, this, this is good. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. God, stop yeah. eating the mic. Um, robberies and comedies. That was an emotional one, mainly for me because that was still kind of uh, fresh in my mind, which is funny because it's more emotional for me than it was for you, and you're the one that lived it. Yeah. Uh, Go well, listen I'm, to that one if you haven't yet. That was... Yeah. Uh, the... Uh, the first few episodes, if you guys don't remember, I think we were still, uh, um, this was, this is kind of funny. Cause I think we did this on the spot. It was, uh, handy when handy stopped showing up for a few of them. Um, we kept saying he was arrested in different ways. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> and he's like, why do you guys say that all the time? I'm like, well, you were arrested in Brazil. And then it was Vegas. Yeah. Um, the, we got the call in from the jail that one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then uh fears we did yours was a good one i like we, that one we did the uh three hour episode if you remember that uh which episode was that was that the dillinger and the life and times of wilson senior no it was the oh, one that says games. three hours but there's video games oh and just let you guys know little uh little secret on the three hours of video games that's like part one yeah because there is another video game episode planned. <laughs> it won't. It will not be three hours. It though. won't be three hours. I think that three hour one. I think we just kept talking, and I think you um, motioned to me like, "Dude, we're at three hours." I'm like, "Are you serious?" You're like, "Yeah." yeah. I'm like, "Oh, we gotta cut it." <laughs> it <takes laughs> too long. Because we both kept getting like texts from our wives, like, "Where are you?" <laughs> yeah. Like we're having fun. Um, but man, we had like so many. Uh, so many good uh episodes i mean really every single one on these you could um you could go through and listen uh and you'll find something in there that that's funny um and memorable at every single one of these but you know what i want to do is i'm thinking about uh just to give you guys a little bit of inside sneak peek i'm, I'm wanting to um get a couple authors on um and then some musical uh more music guests um and then, uh, you know, we're just, we're just wanting to expand out, um, not just with law enforcement, but bring in some sort of entertainment in here. Um, and then, I, I mean, right now, one of my main goals is something that's been on my mind. And I think I sent you a text about it is I would love to get a 911 dispatcher on. Yeah, that'd be and, cool. And just to figure out like, how they deal with things because they're the unseen. Um, they're the voice. They're the lifeline that you first hear. And I've heard 911 calls. I'm like, man, how do you, how do you decompress from that? Cause there's movies out there. One's called the call with Halle Berry where she's a 911 operator. It's intense, man. And I, I thought about doing that for, for a while. I was like, man, I wonder if I could do that. 
But then I'm like, man, that's, I think that's more stressful. Yeah. Like hearing those phone calls with people screaming, I'd be like, shut up. Listen, I, I, I can't, I don't know if I can handle that. Cause there's times when I'm listening to like a recording and I'm like, man, only if the person would be quiet, you know, but I'm like, you can't tell someone who's witnessing their kid dead to be quiet. Yeah. Um, but you know, and like I said, we have episodes planned. We have, um, once, uh, this whole COVID thing's over, we're, we're going to do a live show, do more remote recording, you know, going out and about interviewing people, um, taking it to the street, if you will. I mean, it's a kapuya, kapuya. yeah, that's what I'm talking about, but you know, it's been fun, man. Um, I'm really been enjoying it. Oh, oh, and not to mention, uh, we have more giveaways planned too, but we're not going to tell you about those are yet. Those will be announced on our Instagram. Yeah. I just got, uh, just got some stuff for the giveaways a couple of days ago. So I know for all of you, uh, um, blind listeners right now, if you take a look at Wilson, he's wearing a brand new, uh, thin line brewing sweater. Yeah. So oh, good old hold the line. I have that shirt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it'll be fun. We have, like I said, we have things that are planned that are fun. Um, and so with that, I also, I want to segue that into our, um, outro basically. So, um, I was messing around some things the other day and I realized it's taken us a year to figure it out that our phone number, um, that we've been giving you 916-259-3030 is also a text line. So if you don't feel comfortable, um, you know, like actually leaving a message, send us a text. If you're listening to a show on your phone and you agree or disagree with something, um, hop on there, send us a text. I would love for you guys to be part of the conversation. Um, and you know, you could leave your name. We could, we could t talk about it on the next show or not leave your name, just put anonymous or whatever. We'll just, you know, or if you have questions, you know, just put it on there. Uh, I think that's kind of cool. You know, it sucks. That it took me a year to figure it out. Um, fail. Yeah. I mean, uh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, but, um, so that was, again, that was nine, one, six, two, five, nine, three, zero, three, zero, uh, email the real WTH show at gmail.com. Um, we're at the real WTH show at Instagram, Facebook, untapped, on Untapped, you can see all the past beers that uh, Wilson has tried and his rating. Uh, we got our first five out of five last week, which I think was pretty cool. Um, and then um, I think that, oh, yeah, MSR Arms. Again, we want to thank Ryan for always being by our side. Um, give them a, a visit at msrarms.com. Um, if you're into modern sporting rifles and um, I think some knives on there too, I'm actually sporting the MSR arms hat right now for the video. If you can see it. Um, and then I think that's all I have, man. Is there anything you wanted to say? I don't think so, but it has been fun the last year. I've enjoyed it. It's given me, it's gotten me through some times that were a little rough. Um, one of which we talked about on the show. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a fun time. So, and lastly, I want to thank every single listener who's listened. Um, you know, it, it means a lot. I know even the one in Canada, even the one in Canada, you know, we feel for you. We really feel for you up there. Um, but, uh, you know, like our listeners, some of them, uh, are quiet. They don't really, uh, participate much with communication, which is perfectly fine. But then there's also, a lot that do that will communicate and just send me a text or a message saying, Hey man, I really like the episode. Or even my mom, she goes, Oh my gosh, you guys had me laughing so hard when you said this, or my mom will even put me in my place. She goes, that didn't happen quite like that. I go, what do you mean? And she goes, Ooh. it was like this. I'm like, well, that's what I remember it as, <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't count, but, but I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was something about, I told about the childhood memories episode we did. And I think it was something about, Oh, 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 it was my tree house. Something like that. I said, yeah, my dad built it. My mom goes, no, I did. Oh, I go, okay. Well, I was like three. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it was. I can't remember, but I, I guarantee you right now she's going to hear this and she's gonna be like, no, I remember what it was. 
and I'm going to have to, you know, amend this episode on a future episode of what it was. <laughs> yeah. But again, thanks to all the listeners for listening. And then if you haven't seen us on YouTube yet, all these videos are recorded. Episodes 17 and up, I think have been recorded except for a few that were solo shows with me. Um, and you could go to YouTube and at the real WTH show, um, subscribe. And uh, usually takes about, we alternate it. So once the podcast episodes come out, so like say this is episode 50, uh, episode once episode 50 posts, episode 49 video will post on YouTube. We kind of stagger it a little bit to not overwhelm everybody. So there's some things that are in the video that you can't see, um, especially once we start doing the live shows, you're going to want to like, see. Those. Like my hair. Like your hair. Gosh, it's glorious mane you got. Yeah. It's like uh I'm telling you, man, you, you look like Ace Ventura. It's awesome. I'm I'm really feeling the the guy from Dodgeball. Yeah. Especially with the headphones on. Strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. Um, thanks for being with us for this year and we look forward to the next year and everything that it um brings and we're not stopping. So can we call this season one? Season one is a wrap. Yeah. Cut. So. Oh, we need a cliffhanger. Uh, um, oh, man. Stay tuned for next season when we bring on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. All right. Who are we going to bring on next year? Dude, I'm, I'm going to end it with that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we should be like, I could say something like "Later's on the Min J." Oh, am I supposed to say mine now? Oh, yeah, you're supposed to say your thing still. Oh no, I was just gonna cut it there where I said it, and <laughs> won't be done. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I could say um, "Later's on the Min J," and then you would say that, or <laughs> no, like how we did it already when I said it before. It's done. Oh, so I just hit stop right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hit. I'll, I'll stop hitting record then. Actually, I'm gonna leave this going for a little bit because outtakes. Actually, that's a pretty good outtake. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs>